Triathlon is ultimately an outdoor sport, so the thought of training to do that indoors can seem a little counterintuitive. That said, many pros and age groupers alike actually opt to do at least some of their training in the comfort of their own home or the gym. Yeah, and if you're new to this type of training, do not fear because today we're going to be running you through the pros and cons of indoor training, covering what you'll need to get started and also the equipment. So get ready to get sweaty. One of the most significant reasons triathletes choose to train indoors is for time efficiency. You're not going to waste time cycling or running to find a venue where you can do your main session and you're not going to waste lots of time putting on all that winter kit. And talking of winter training, you don't have to clean your bike afterwards, which is definitely a plus point for me. And also you can be consistent and efficient and you're not going to waste time where maybe you're going downhill or you're freewheeling when on the bike. Well, you also avoid punctures, maybe even bonking miles from home and then needing to get an expensive taxi ride back home. Also, there's a safety element. You rarely hear of athletes getting injured from training on a turbo or on a treadmill indoors. There's no potholes, there's no mud to slip on, traffic to negotiate and so on. Depending on where you live, the weather can really affect the training that you can actually do, especially in a cold, harsh winter or maybe even at the other end of the spectrum, a really hot summer. But training indoors, the climate does remain relatively constant and you can actually, within reason, replicate the conditions that you might experience in your next race. Well, on the topic of weather, also helps save your kit from getting dirty, keeping it much cleaner. Plus, there's the factor of daylight hours. Other than gym opening hours, maybe that's going to be a slight constraint, but otherwise you can train at any hour of the day. Now for those young families out there, maybe of a newborn, you can also train indoors in your own home and not need a babysitter. Anyway, enough talking of why we should do it, let's actually get started. Right then, when we talk about indoor training, the first bit of equipment that probably springs to mind is the treadmill. Now I appreciate not all of us have treadmills at home, but most gyms, like this one that I'm in today, will more than likely have at least one available to you. Now treadmills are great for a number of reasons. Obviously as we go into the winter and the weather starts to deteriorate, it allows us to keep our running mileage up. Also helps prevent us from perhaps falling on slippery surfaces outside and also prevents you from developing any aches and pains from running on muscles that are cold and tense. Personally though, I found treadmills fantastic for all year round use, both because they're specific for workouts, but also really efficient with your time. In fact, let's just show you how. So you want to start by gradually increasing the speed from a walking pace up to a comfortable running pace to get yourself warmed up. Now if you are a competent runner and you're going to be running at some good paces during your session, then research does suggest that you should set the treadmill to a 1% incline. And now that's to basically emulate the feeling of running outdoors. There is some contrasting research, but most suggest that this is a pace in excess of 4 minute 30 per kilometer or 7 minute 10 per mile. Personally though, I would just always recommend setting it at a 1% incline because this really gives that lifelike feel of running outdoors. Now on the subject of paces, this is where I believe treadmills can be really useful because once you set that speed on the treadmill, you are running at that speed whether you like it or not. Whereas outside, you can quite easily drift on or off the pace whether going too slow or too fast. So on a treadmill, you're stuck at that pace. You can really start to get the quality out of a session and really dial into a pace. Also, we have the incline function on treadmills. So if you do have maybe a hilly race coming up, then you can start to simulate that course. You can specifically work on inclines that match that race that you've got coming up. And finally, footwear. Now this may or may not apply to you, but I know from experience when I run on a treadmill, I feel the impact a little bit more than usual. And that's because I predominantly run off-road on a softer surface than the treadmill. Now, if you're like me and you do a lot of your running off-road, and perhaps you've suffered from running-related injuries in the past, then you may want to make sure that you're wearing a slightly more cushioned pair of running shoes. However, if you do a lot of your running on the road, that is obviously a slightly higher impact than a treadmill. So, running on a treadmill is actually gonna be quite forgiving, so you're gonna be absolutely fine. However, the most common method of indoor training for triathletes is cycling. 
All you need is either your own bike and a turbo, you can do it on rollers, a watt bike, or a spin bike. I mean, most gyms will have a static bike of some sort, but if you've got the choice, it's best to find a spin bike that measures power or a watt bike, so then at least you can use watts to help structure your training more easily. Although I would say the ideal situation would be to have your own bike set up on a turbo at home so you've got the convenience of it being really close and no excuses not to use it. And for that, if you did have something like a garage, that's perfect, but all you need is enough space to be able to put your bike and your turbo stand. And trust me, we see all sorts getting sent in for the GTN Pain Cave. Other than enough space, what do you need? Well, a working bike and a turbo, obviously. And there are so many to choose from, but to help you out, Mark's actually made a video on how to choose the right turbo. And you can find that in the link in the description below. But there are two main options. One, when you keep the back wheel on your bike and you mount that directly onto the turbo and the resistance is provided through the back wheel, or a direct drive chain mount like this one, when you take the back wheel off and the bike is mounted directly onto the turbo. And the advantage of one of these actually very accurately measures your power. So if you don't have a power meter on your bike, you can then ride to power for your training. But whatever one you do go for, they are a great investment. Well, on top of the obvious, it's a good idea to pop a mat under your bike as this helps to catch sweat and protect your floor if it's a nice carpet, for example. But it also helps to eliminate any sound because if you are in a flat and you've got neighbours beneath, they'd probably be rather grateful of you reducing the sound that comes from some of the turbos. And talking of sweat, you will sweat on a turbo. I hate to break it to you, so come prepared. Make sure you've got a towel or something to at least wipe your face. And if you are a heavy sweater, you might want to think about protecting your bike somehow. And obviously, what goes out must come back in, so you need to make sure you've got enough hydration to hand. So have your water bottles filled up either on your bike or on a shelf next to you. And the idea of riding on a turbo means that you're not going to have any brakes. You'd have to stop at traffic lights, for example. So you also want to have all your nutrition to hand. So maybe pop a gel in your pocket or have a bar handy so you don't have to stop pedaling. Finally, and for me, an essential factor to overcome when it comes to indoor training is boredom. Now you are just going to be sat looking at the same wall not going anywhere, no change of scenery, so it can get tough. So this is when a structured session can come in really handy and also give you more benefit from your training. So if you have a session plan, you've got to warm up, you've got to warm down and then stick some meaty intervals in the middle and that will soon distract you. You can also have a play around with changing your cadence and also think about practicing riding in the saddle and then doing efforts out of the saddle. All of this will just spice up your training. But if you're still finding it really hard to get over that boredom factor, then why not crank up some great tunes, maybe even put a movie on if you've got a slow, steady ride to do, or you could use Zwift. Zwift is a computer game where you ride alongside virtual friends or actual other friends who've logged in, and you're riding along real life courses or some made up courses, and it's just a great way to enjoy your training and you'll find that it can actually become quite addictive. Well, we've gone into a lot of detail about cycling and the running, but indoor training isn't limited there. Obviously, as long as you live close to a swimming pool, a lot of us will swim indoors, or maybe some of us lucky folk out there can swim with an open air swimming pool. But there are a few with the real luxury of having an endless pool within their own home. So essentially, if you have a treadmill and a turbo trainer at home, you could do a full triathlon without actually leaving your front door. And if you take the likes of Lionel Sanders and Lucy Charles, at certain times of the year, they will do just that. Yeah, well, on top of the obvious swim, bike and run, you can also complement and sometimes even substitute the three sports with a bit of gym work. Strength and conditioning is important for staying injury free as well as getting stronger across all of the disciplines. And swimming is the one that's often the hardest to do, especially if you're traveling or if your local pool isn't quite so local. And there are exercises that you can do that can at least help replicate the same firing of the muscles that you'd use in swimming, but we'll go into more detail in another video in the future. Well, we've gone on about the benefits to training indoors, but as with anything, a balance is key. For instance, if you're doing all your training indoors, then you could actually be missing out on some of the valuable skills that you learn from riding your bike outside. And also, there's your position. I mean, you get into this perfect static position on a turbo trainer, but can you actually replicate that outdoors? Yeah, the same goes for running outdoors. What do you need to adapt to the change in incline, the change in terrain underfoot, all of which helps to fire up those smaller muscles that support your lower leg and your feet. And they can actually switch off a little bit if you are running purely on a smooth treadmill. After all, the variety is the spice of life. So if you are doing a block of indoor training, it could be good to break that up. It just helps to keep you slightly more motivated after all. 
staring at a brick wall for hours on end can be a little bit demoralizing. And don't forget, you do race outdoors. You should now have more of an idea of how to go about indoor training. Well, whether you're new to it or you're a seasoned indoor trainer, do take a picture and send it in to us because we would love to share it as part of the Pain Cave section on our GTN show. And you can do that by clicking on the link in the description below for the GTN uploader. Yeah, and if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. And to make sure that you don't miss any more videos from GTN, why not subscribe by just hitting the globe here? If you'd like to see our how to choose an indoor trainer video, just click down here. And if you are new to running indoors and you want an introduction to treadmill running, there's a video on that just here.